Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Panini Elite Football six box half case pick your team number six. Big thanks to this group for getting in on it. Here on Tuesday the 20th, this is part of the promo that's running a little bit later tonight. Sean Maddock, Last Spot Mojo, Tennessee Titans. And remember we popped open that case a little while ago. I marked those six so we know that they're from the same case. And... Good luck, everybody. Let's see what we got. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as this, the stat that's been going around the nation, teams who start 0-2 have about a 9-10% chance to make the playoffs historically. I, I, that's kind of a crazy number. I'm reminded of that every year. It always blows my mind. But... Your, uh, your Cincinnati Bengals are 0-2. Tennessee Titans are 0-2. My Raiders are 0-2 in a tough division. Carolina Panthers, Atlanta Falcons, 0-2. Season's done. Dusted. <laughs> unless, uh, unless they make a turnaround. Which of those 0-2 teams have the best chance at the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen? It's kind of a wild number. Is there, is that just, is that coincidence or is there a correlation? Is there a reason why it's there? There's got to be a reason, right? I mean, maybe with 17, with a 17 game season, that's got to be, that's got to change that math, right? With an extra game, you know, kind of a, another variable right there. Jim thinks Cincinnati and Vegas can make it. I hope so. It's going to be, I mean, the Raiders' first five games were going to be, were really tough. They got five games and a week six bye, and I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be a tough challenge for my Raiders. But what, what was your question earlier, Jim? You were asking what team, what team has surprised me? Is that, is that what you asked earlier? That was a good question for this sort of longer break. What surprised NFL team is making the playoffs this year? Ooh, that is a good question. We usually look at last year's, we usually look at last year's uh, standings, and there's always like a a four-win team or something like that that flips it around and ends up winning like ten games or something like that and gets into the playoffs. No, let's see, who would be a surprise? Yeah, Dolphins? Yeah, both g saying Dolphins too. Jim's like Miami, question mark? Were they expected to make the playoffs though? There's Tyler uh, Algier to 3.99. I think there was so many questions about about Tua, which I, he may have answered last week. But I think that was the big question going into the season. There's Trey McBride to 9.99. Joe saying only six teams made it at 0-3 and, and only one team made it 0-4. Yeah, the time, the clock is ticking. Jacksonville says Eddie. Seahawks, Jim? I mean, that would be, that's a hot take. If they if they can make it to playoffs. And speaking of Jacksonville, there's a Pen Pals autograph, Trayvon Walker. Big Trayvon Walker. Could be a game wrecker here, this guy. This goes to Kyle and the Jaguars. There you go, Kyle. All right, I certainly think there might be a week three overreaction in the line next week for Miami after this big win. That's for sure. There's Daniel Jones to, to 75. Giants could be a good surprise team. Maybe. I feel like it's a, maybe Steelers? That could be a surprise. Jacksonville could certainly be a surprise.
What about Trendsetters Lions? That's Aaron Salinas. What about what about Aaron's Lions? They're one and one. I mean, could that be could that be a surprise uh, playoff team? Could they sneak into a little wild card spot? Their offensive line is excellent. Their running game, they don't have to they don't have to rely on Goff's arm too much. Here's Eric uh, Uzukanma. 16 out of 25. Nice turn of the century autograph. Speaking of Miami, that'll go to Serenity. There you go, Serenity. They've got they've got a game record in Aiden Hutchinson. What about what about the Bears? Rex saying Fields is looking well. Fields look good in Week One. Bears not not too good in Week Two. <laughs> Owned by the Packers again. Yeah, I, we said this about Detroit in the preseason. They lost a lot of uh, a lot of like touchdown or less, a lot of maybe even field goal or less. Lions lost a lot of teams or a lot of games last year because of that. If you know that happens with a lot of teams, but if that luck flips the other way, and they maybe win some of those like one score games, I, I kind of like their coach. Sort of, uh, I, I like his style. He's got a good rah rah attitude. Yeah, Eagles looking really good too. That might be your Super Bowl favorites, I think, at this stage of the very early in the season. But your my my week two overreaction. There's elite coverage. Donta Hightower, 23 out of 25. Nice relic, some good color there for Karen and her Patriots. That's the first box. Next box. Joe Christian saying a lot of, uh, JC saying a lot of people are going to view the Buffalo game as a tell-all for Miami. But games are so much different down there in that humidity. I think they'll win their home games against each other. Yeah, I could see that's going to be a good game. A little Bills-Dolphins Bills, Bills -Dolphins game. Do the Rams make it back to Super Bowl? Hard to go back to back. Um, no. Maybe. I think a lot has to do with uh, what what the truth is. What's the truth about Matthew Stafford's right elbow? Apparently, had an injury that was more similar to a baseball pitcher injury. Yeah, all of this is no to the back to back. Which is not commonly not commonly seen in in quarterbacks, but more commonly seen with uh with baseball players with pitchers. How bad is that injury? I don't know. They looked okay in their last game, but I think they're still trying to figure things out. Um. Van Jefferson, I think, being out for a little bit, I think, is has been a bit of an issue. They got to find a little footing in their running game. I think they thought Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson would be a lot more effective, and that, and that sets up everything else, you know, in that offense. So, like a lot of teams. Niners, yeah, I mean, that's a poor trade land. I feel, I really feel bad for that guy. He's given every opportunity to succeed, given the keys to the car, and just really unfortunate broken ankle. Two surgeries on that leg, ankle, and fibula, I think. I think that's the smaller of your shin bones. Tibia? Fibula. Fibula. I think the fibula is the thinner of the... Oliver, hit me with some anatomy here. Your fibula is the bigger of the shin bones or the smaller, of the thinner of the shin bones? <laughs> All right, behind Terry McLaurin, there he is, Trey Lance, poor Trey Lance. I mean, imagine if the imagine if the Niners did trade Jimmy Garoppolo. Thirty-three 
Fibula is the thinner. There you go. My, uh, my anatomy class is coming in handy. There is Justin Herbert to 90. I think Justin Herbert also avoided a scary injury to the ribs. That would have been hashtag not good for the hobby. But I think the result was pretty good. He's got some extra days to, to rest up. And we got turn of the century autograph. Lewis uh, sign? 80 out of 99. I saw the sign. And it opened up my eyes. I saw the sign. No one's going to drink. It goes to Jerry. I'm going with sign just because it fits my, my song narrative here. That goes to Jerry and the uh, Vikings. <laughs> yeah, what do you do? If Jimmy G takes the Niners to the Super Bowl, do they sign him up for next year? I think you, I think you have to. And Jermaine Johnson to three ninety nine. I mean, I suppose you can just sign up. Um, there's Snoop Connor. What up, Snoop? 75, snooping around. Snoop Dogg on a cat team. Goes to the Jaguars. But, uh, yeah, a little ace of base. Um, yeah, if Meriden Rodgers made it. I mean, I think that receiver situation, unless someone emerges on that team, if like a Romeo Dobbs or one of those, you know, or if like Randall Cobb turns back the clock. All right, there's John Mechie the third, Pen Pals, rookie on card autograph. I think he's the one battling cancer, right? Some form of cancer. Never a good thing. Aaron Miller with the Texans. Could this be like a surprise team? No. Man? Hmm. Maybe not. I like they're fun though. Yeah, see, like guys like Damian Pierce, you know, Davis Mills. Leukemia, is it? For John Mitchie? Still, still not, not great. Is that what it was? Some form of cancer? Man, it's not, I think someone mentioned it earlier. Maybe it was Bolts, but the Eagles look really good. We got we got some Eagles fans here at the shop. Jason Jaspi is on Instagram live right now at Jaspi's Breaks doing personal boxes. Jason Jaspi is a big Eagles guy. Nick Jaspi and his pops, the boss man. Also Eagles fans. Nice, some fireworks from the Jets, right? 14 out of 25. So they're pretty happy. They've got the defense. they got the offensive line. they got a good running game. You know, Jalen Hurts doesn't have to throw too much, but can still extend plays with his legs. It's Derek Carr to 399 for the Raiders. And, you know, they've got A.J. Brown. they got Devonta Smith. they got Dallas Goddard. So they got some pass catchers. So that's a pretty well-balanced team. All they got to do is maybe, uh, you know, just, I mean, their their biggest quote-unquote problem might just be, you know, maybe closing out games. They kind of let the lines back into it in week one and maybe some clock management type stuff and, you know, but that might be. And then, yeah, they just got to stay healthy, but, but if that all clicks this season, that could be a really, could be a really interesting slash scary team. Yeah, I did see Dane Jackson's injury. That looked that play looked bad. But I think it was reported that when he was being carted off, that he did give up the thumbs up sign. So any fears of any fears of like you know what a bad neck injury can do, but any fears of that I think wasn't quite there, but 
Herbert, Burrow, Josh Allen, or Mahomes, you'll have one to build your franchise around. Who do I have, Jim's asking. Uh, you, uh, Oliver says Josh Allen. I think it would come down to Josh Allen or Mahomes for me. I think... I, Oliver, I might have, I think, Josh Allen. He's got the size, he's got the cannon of an arm. He's got the ability to improve from season to season. Because everyone thought he was just an arm and his legs, and that was it. But, you know, it turns out he can do much more than that. Still big enough to run around and not get hurt. Wow, Diego has two of your buddies have a bet. Whoever wins the division, Cowboys, Eagles, the other person gets the winner's signature tattooed on them. Where? <laughs> How big? Yeah, J Jason Wonder, isn't, isn't health a concern for everybody? Yeah. But if they can stay healthy, that's just like every team, but if they can stay healthy, it's gonna, that team's going to look really good. What do you have, Jim? What, what quarterback do you build around and why? DeMarvin Leal to nine ninety nine. <laughs> Rex, Rex, Rex taking it back to twenty uh, whatever year he was drafted. Rex taking it back to twenty eighteen when everyone was talking about how Josh Allen, nobody wanted him from college, had to settle for Wyoming. Come on, Rex. Still a cool story though. But that's, that's right up there with, uh, did you know that Antonio Gates used to play basketball? <laughs> did you know that, that Kershaw and Matthew Stafford went to high school together? That's true, that's true, yeah. Right, Rex doesn't follow football as closely as we do, so i got to let him off the hook on that. But, yeah, it's a great story. I mean... You know, like, as cheesy as it might sound, I'm sure he'll tell everybody, hey, if you've got a dream, pursue it. Patriots, Karen, if you got a dream of hitting big and Jaspi's case breaks, you got to pursue it. Traylon Burks, see, ABC, always be closing, to 399 Yeah, that's true, Jason. How uh, um, how many yards do I think I do you think that Joe Jaspi right now? How many yards do you think I can gain? Um, there's Brian Cook, by the way, behind the Eagles' offensive line. Do you think I get positive yardage? I think so. I think I can do it. There's Drake London. To 99. Elijah Moore and Epic Materials, Kirk Cousins. My 40 time is about, I don't know, 18, 19 seconds. <laughs> Here's Jerry and the Vikings. I'm sure it's sub 10 seconds. I'm about Darren Sproles' height. I don't think I have Darren Sproles' uh, muscle mass. I'd probably have to gain like another... I'd have to gain a lot of muscle. Not just weight, but muscle. Andrew Booth Jr., 
Rex, I did hear about that just today, actually, on a uh, on a sports talk radio show. I was talking about other random stuff, but uh, yeah, Mariah Carey's secret grunge album. She did. Sounds kind of cool, actually. I'd like to see an official release of that. Nay, nice, Oliver. Oliver says, if I got 10 carries, he's going to give me eight yards. I love it. And there's Ahmad Sauce Gardner. Pen Pals, on-card autograph. That's for you, Adam Kupperman. He's got to be happy with his team. Week two, nice little comeback win. We both sat Garrett Wilson in our fantasy teams. I don't think we're going to repeat that. Next week. Uh, Jim, going back to that quarterback question, Jim likes uh, Joe Burrow. Because he has the uh, arrogance of Brady, the ability to read defenses like Manning. It factor. Like, but he does, God, he does have an it factor. I do love his attitude, man. Joe Burrow, how, it's hard not to like that guy. I think his, his uh, Heisman Trophy speech... What was was pretty incredible, and he's able to just kind of say the things that if anyone else said it, it might feel like it's just a line. You know, there's Isaiah Likely, Likely story for Adam and the Ravens, where it may seem like a line or may seem a little cringy or cheesy, but like he he believes it. I mean, if I was a offensive lineman or a receiver on that team, I'd run through walls for that guy. You think I could run some sort of misdirection Statue of Liberty type play? Ten carries, though. I feel like I may be. I may. Ne I may never walk again after ten. I may. I may sustain a serious injury. All right. Halfway through this half case break, got about twenty minutes to go here, and then we'll do the immaculate baseball. And that might bring us close to the end of the night, I think. And the promo randomizer. So this break should take another 10, 15 minutes and do the randomizer. And then God brings to the bottom of the hour. And then the break's about half an hour. And then, yeah, my, that, that, random, that promo randomizer might take us a little tiny bit over, but it'll be good. I am down to do another quick little break if you want to. You could maybe twist my arm to do a... Uh... Oh, I don't know. I mean, the hit parade's... A... Well, no, the hit parade's actually kind of close. Seven full spots in the last filler. Yeah, I don't... Uh, this, the particular sports talk radio show I was listening to has, like... Um, has like a I don't know they they do sports and and like pop culture stuff. It's a afternoon show, so they go they go off topic a little bit, much like we do here, Rex. Oh man, so I was in Las Vegas over the weekend, um, and uh, just visiting some family and whatnot. Uh, but man, listening to, and I drove back on Monday, Monday night, and but listening to Raiders, uh, listening to Las Vegas sports talk radio, and the people just melting down about the Raiders. Oh boy. But hey, it, was, it, it made for a really exciting week too, that's for sure. That Kansas City Chargers game started off really great. The Jets with that big comeback. Lions with a win. Tampa Bay finally getting a win against the Saints. Giants are 2-0. and You know, like Miami with that huge comeback. Man, that was crazy. D Dallas without Dak Prescott getting the dub. And then a couple dud Monday night games but and the Sunday night games. So primetime needs to step up what games are we looking forward to in week three we'll go through that maybe in when i start ripping packs in the next box there's jeremy ruckert bring the ruckert and there's mm, jameson jameson williams blue ink on card autograph for uh for guy baker for that guy lions nice w for them 
Jameson Williams, is he on some sort of short-term IR? I feel like they're pretty high on him once once he's playing some... Uh, Once he uh, starts playing some games, I think he's going to be be pretty uh, pretty good. They're pretty high on him. So let's see. Brandon Ayuk. That is for the Niners. That's going to go to Jerry and San Francisco. Jim's looking forward to Buffalo, Miami. Oh, that is a nice game. Clyde Edwards Hilaire to 399. Let's see, uh, let's see what Tua can I mean, listen. It's officially time to go nuts on Tua if Tua can beat Buffalo. Like Buffalo's got a great defense. And I know it's it's warm, it's hot, it's humid down there. There's a chance. Any given Sunday, right? There's Jalen Peter to 999. Ravens Pats, Steelers, Browns. This Steelers Browns game at oh that's on Thursday yeah that's that's an island game I'll I'll have a pick for that this year I'm picking all the primetime games forcing myself to pick all the primetime games which is not really I think a pro strategy but I'm pick, picking all the primetime games just for fun five Sunday games so you can find that on the break schedule under Joe's under the uh, Joe's picks tab. Pittsburgh at Cleveland I suppose. I don't know. Is that something? I mean, we're gonna watch it. It's on. It's on Amazon. I'd like to see. Uh, I don't know. It's probably not gonna happen in the short week, but eventually we gotta see maybe Kenny Pickett in action, right? There's McCaffrey blue parallel nine out of ten. Nice elite deck. Christian McCaffrey. That's for Kyle and the Panthers. Cat team mojo. Ooh, Brady Rogers this week too. All right, I'll see. I'll, I'll watch that. We got Nick Chubb, forty-four out of seventy-five. I think Nick Chubb was saying I should have fell down at the one-yard line. That's for the Browns. That'll be for Guy, uh, and that would have maybe. I think they would have been able to kneel to take a knee a couple times. And close out the game, but didn't happen. Which gave the Jets a chance to come back and win it, and win they did. It's Jerry Judy, back to the future autograph for my rivals. Denver, Kyle. Spellbound Joe Burrow to 349. There's DeAndre Swift for the Lions. Could be a surprise team in the making. There's always one or two every year. 37 99 for Guy and the Lions. I'm happy about the Broncos' slow start. Makes me feel a little bit better about the Raiders' also slow start. Although Eddie's happy Chubb didn't fall down because that helped him win his fantasy league. All right, Jim also likes... Uh, Lions Vikings, like a divisional matchup could be interesting. Maybe see what the Lions can do. So Thursday night, Pittsburgh, Cleveland. All right, we're gonna watch that anyway. Uh, let's see, Sunday early games. Houston at Chicago. Maybe just to not the sexiest game on the slate, but you know, maybe Davis Mills, Justin Fields might keep an eye on that. Vegas at Tennessee, obviously, as a Raiders fan, I'll be keeping a sharp eye on that. Both teams desperate for wins. Let's see. I don't know, I don't know if I like the Raiders on the road either. Um, Kansas City at Indianapolis. Mm. Yeah, Buffalo at Miami. That seems to be a pretty, pretty uh, shaping up to be a really nice, uh, a really nice early matchup. I like that. Detroit, Minnesota. Okay. Lamar Jackson and New England. Okay. 
Cincinnati, well now now that Cincinnati's 0 and 2, Cincinnati at the uh, at the Jets. That could be really interesting. Zach Wilson coming back. They keep rolling with with the hot hand. I can't believe I'm saying this. With the hot hand Joe Flacco. Eagles Washington. I guess that could be interesting. Saints at Carolina. Eh. Jacksonville at Chargers. I guess. I mean, that's after that's the first uh, late game. I guess that's okay. I think Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert, actually. That might be a pretty good matchup. Rams at Cardinals. Okay. Falcons at Seattle. Eh. Yeah, Green Bay at Tampa Bay. That, that'll be your marquee late game. Your Sunday night game, Niners at Denver. Jimmy Garoppolo, Russell Wilson. And I don't have a lot of high hopes for that game. And the Monday night game, Dallas at New York Football Giants. I guess, uh, I, I, you know what? I hope that Saquon Barkley has a, and Daniel Jones has a great game beating their rivals, Dallas, on Monday Night Football. That'd be good for the hobby. Yeah, Diego's thinking Amon Ross St. Brown a star. He's saying just as good as Chase or Waddle. Just doesn't get a lot of attention because he's a Lion. I wonder if the Lions could maybe make some noise this season, though. I mean, they're at Minnesota. That's, you know, that's not a gimme for either team. I mean, that, that's, let's see what the odds say. Wow, they have the Vikings at minus six? Am I buying into my own hype? There's 45 out of 99, Derek Stingley Jr. I'm tempted to take the road dog at plus six. Maybe that might just be an overreaction to the Lions win and the Vikings loss. That'll go to Aaron Miller in the text, and so will this. Yeah, Diego's saying, look at, look at the numbers. I'm sure uh, fantasy owners, sharp fantasy owners are all over it. Not me, though. I was, I was not sharp. What about Buffalo at Miami? Bills are the road favorite at a minus five and a half. That's sort of a weird line. There, I might have to wait and see on that one, if at all. Maybe that's a stay away. Who knows what's going to happen in that game? Uh, there's Jamar Chase to 99. That'll be for Cincinnati. That'll be for Kevin. And Jim's asking, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, who's the best wide receiver? I don't know. Diego might make the case for a Monroe St. Brown. Look at the numbers, he says. Andrew Booth Jr. to 9.99. Ooh, some more sauce. Extra sauce. Adam Kupperman ordering a, a well done, well done New York Jets extra sauce, please. And there's Tyquan Thornton to 399. Buffalo defense will win it for them. They sh it should should right. Uh, what's the what's the weather there? I don't know. Game time weather, 86 degrees, a chance for thunderstorms. So maybe that's a a, a sticky. Hot, humid day. You know, maybe the uh, maybe the air conditioning stops working in the visiting locker room, Diego. What, what then? Poor Trey Lance. Chris Olave, it's a nice moment in that Saints game. You know, if uh, if Tua keeps the keeps the offense on the field for a while, kind of. Saps there. Oh, there's nothing worse than than playing sports on a hot, humid day. That fourth quarter starts to roll around. It's ooh, kind of a grind. 
There's Chase Claypool to 75. You know, you're not you're not reacting to the ball as quickly. You know, maybe you're regretting that uh, that you snuck out the night before to go party in Miami, Diego. There's two uh, to 3.99, so maybe some guys are dehydrated to start with during the day. You know, so. Oh, poor Trey Lance. I do, I do feel bad for that guy. Moxie relic for the Niners. I mean, especially if you're if you are uh, as as they say in the finance. If you're long on Trey Lance, you know if you're have a, a strong position on Trey Lance, that's that's rough too for the hobby for him. It's Jalen Peter four out of twenty four die cut for the Texans. That's going to go to Aaron Miller. Derek Carr, my Raiders. They got to they got to shape things up. Can't go zero and three. All right. Oh, down to our last box already. Good luck. Yeah, I think uh, as a neutral, looking forward to Bills Dolphins for sure. Yeah, Green Bay Tampa Bay. The Battle of the Bays should be really fun. Obviously gonna gonna watch my Raiders, watch the primetime games, and listen. Stick with us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll break football all season long. We'll talk football all season long. I hope so, Jim. On paper, they're too good to fall to 0-3. You know the crazy thing is? <laughs> the Raiders defense, which was supposed to be the the problem for them, was actually pretty good, especially the secondary. For what, whatever that's worth. So there are silver linings. Although Chandler Jones has been a little anonymous the first couple weeks. So the pass rush hasn't been as as terrifying as I hoped it would be. There are some early injuries. Yeah, that offense just looks a little... Looked great the first half of that game. But play calling, I kind of think, kind of failed them a little bit. Like I said, there was a point in the fourth quarter where they were kind of up. And their defense had been on the field for a long time, just chasing after Kyler Murray. And they called three passing plays in a row, and ultimately they only took like nine or ten seconds off the clock, and the defense was right back out there. And I think that was a drive where Kyler Murray marched it down the field and then hit the touchdown and the two-point conversion. So... So there were opportunities were there. Same with the Chargers game. The opportunities are there. Just just bad ball protection. Oh, yeah, if Hunter Renfro doesn't fumble a couple times, that makes a difference. But a lot of squandered opportunities. And same with the week one game, too, against the Chargers. Some interceptions from Derek Carr. That's not good. And, you know, they gotta, the Raiders have to clean that up and clean it up fast. Diego's asking, who's arguably the worst team in the NFL so far? Brandon, what's going on? Yeah, good to be back. Back in my little mini vacay. Um, Brandon says the Browns. Yeah, I'm just glancing at the standings right now. Even at Owen, uh, yeah. I don't know, Falcons don't look very good. Panthers kind of looked good for 0-2. Yeah, are the 1-1 one one Browns? I mean, maybe they're lucky to be 1-1 one one at this point. Titans haven't looked very good. You know what? Colts. Yeah, I think that's a good one, Kevin. Colts. I think Colts and Titans. I'm looking at the... Uh, the uh, the point differentials, Colts are minus twenty four. I think they got shut out last week too, right? And the Titans are minus thirty five. Those aren't good numbers. I mean, Falcons' point difference is at least minus five, Jim. So they've been kind of keeping it at least points for and against, kind of keeping it close that way. 
There's Trevor Lawrence right there speaking of the Jags. 75, that'll be for Kyle D. JJ saying Aaron Judge. I would say that's something to watch right now. Yeah, we were we were watching it. We we saw the uh, soon after his 60th. We saw that saw the highlight. Stan walked it off. So a lot of baseball to watch too. Absolutely. Yeah, Bengals and Raiders. They got to be better than their records show, right? Yeah, Bengals point differential only minus six. 0 and two at minus six. Raiders minus 11. At 0 and 2, so might be a, might be a little uh, 0 and 2 might be a little harsh for them. I wonder when Desmond Ritter will get some looks. That's for the Falcons. That'll be for Simon. Maybe sooner than we think. There's Tannehill. We might see more Malik Willis too. We saw a little cameo from him last night. Ooh, no. The color of that parallel almost made it seem like that was going to be a one of one, but 68 out of 99, Aaron Rodgers, Packers, that'll be for James. John Mechie the third. Yep, Jay. John Mechie the third. This is 2022. Who's the worst starting QB through two weeks? I mean, I'm looking at the uh, the ESPN total NFL total QBR, or do they have rankings up? I mean, when was this updated? No, that was not updated recently. But according to QBR, Baker Mayfield is your worst QB, followed up by Justin Fields. Jameis Winston did not have a good game. Davis Mills is down there. Daniel Jones, Matt Ryan still down there. But according to the key, for whatever that's worth, for whatever QBR is worth, Baker Mayfield is currently your worst starting quarterback. Tannehill, believe it or not, is kind of middle of the pack, but I think that's that's buoyed by buoyed, buoyed by Bowied, David Bowied, buoyed by uh, his week one. Kind of put up some numbers. There's Drake London for Atlanta. Nice pen pals autograph for Simon and the ATL, the Dirty Birds. There you go. I feel like the camera's not really focusing on there. There we go. Nice Drake London. TJ Hawkinson to three ninety nine for the Lions. Sauce Gardner again to 9.99, and Chad Ocho Cinco. 80. Can you believe it? 83 out of 99. <laughs> Two off the jersey number. Come on. Kevin with the Bengals. Tyreek Hill to 349, Dolphins edition. There's Drake London again. That's to 95. And JJ saying, uh, poor Matt Ryan. He's, he's still an upgrade, though. Still an upgrade, I want to say. That team's better than their record, too. Nice, right, Simon Meyer. Congrats on that Drake London. He's saying he's a sleeper. Just put him in my starting lineup for this week, too. He is, actually. He looked pretty good. Saw some highlights of him. And there you go, gang. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Let's do this kind of a longer break, 45 minutes. Let's do a quick little recap here.
There, there's that nice clean looking Drake London, some nice low number die cuts, some sauce. That is to 10 right there, that's pretty nice. Now there's some more sauce, some relics, some turn of the century, some nice on cards. A lot of great stuff in this. Thanks for watching, thanks for breaking with us ladies and gentlemen. Stick with us all football season long. We'll keep ripping some football, keep chatting football, keep breaking down the game uh, as, uh, as, as we do. That's what we do. Thanks everybody, I'm Joe, I'll see you next time for the next break.